I am Karan Bhatia speaking with Sebastian Fundora. He's now 19-0-1, 13 knockouts, only 24 years old. We know him as the towering inferno. Sebastian, how are you doing, my friend? Good, good, good. Excited to be here. And we know that you just had one of the biggest victories of your career. You were headlining on Showtime versus Erickson Lubin. Um, and, and we're going to talk about the fight. But leading up to the, this matchup, um, how were you preparing for Lubin? We, we know he's tough. He'd only had the one loss to Charlo. Um, and, and we've seen him drop Rosario uh, using the body shot. I'm sure you were preparing uh, for some of those body shots because just the way that the height was going to play into it, he was going to have a clear lane to the body. Um, so how were you preparing for this matchup? I prepared the same way I prepare for every single fight, train hard and, and trust my work. And you were the main event headliner on Showtime, as we mentioned. Uh, this was also for an interim 154 pound belt. So, I know you've been in a lot of big fights, but were there, was there any specific nerves coming into this fight? No, not at all. Not at all. I, I feel like the fights before that prepared me for this one to finally headline in a, in, in a, in a main event. And um, I was ready for it. And you, you certainly were. You showed that in the second round. You landed the right uppercut. Uh, we saw you celebrating after you, you dropped him. What, what was going through your mind right there? Uh, and did you think the fight would have been over at that point? You know, if that round, if, if that knockdown was in the beginning of the round, I think I could have got the job done. But uh, it was at the end of the round, and, and we just kept going with the plan. Were you hoping that you could finish him in the beginning of round three? Because as you said, you dropped him, and then the round ended. So were you, were you looking for the finish in the beginning of round three? No, but just going back to the game plan. You know, you can go and... Um, and go desperate and go go for a knockout and expect a knockout right away, especially with these elite fighters. I know that in the post-fight interview, you called your uppercut your lucky punch. Why do you feel that way? It always lands and it always does damage. So that that's my go-to punch. And then, like I said, my lucky punch. As the fight progressed, the middle rounds, um, you know, you weren't necessarily able to get him out of there. And, and it was uh, it was getting to be a little bit more of an even fight. Um, did you feel Lubin coming auto at all? Did you feel the momentum changing at all in the middle rounds? No, I felt my my pace was going is the was the one going the whole time. You know, I felt like it was my fight the whole time. There's never a point besides that seventh round, that one that was a couple seconds. But other than that, after I got back up from that knockdown, I, I felt the fight was mine again, too. And that leads us to, to round seven. And this was actually the first time that you had been dropped in your career. I know you said in the post-fight interview that you took a knee uh, from the punishment that, that was going on there. It looked like the mouthpiece came out for a sec. Um, what was going on there in, in your head? It, you know, it must have taken a lot of uh, understanding of where you were to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to take a knee, take the point deduction, but that's going to help me long term to get myself together. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather take a I'd rather take a point away from that round than than lose a fight completely. You know, lose a round instead of lose a fight. That's that's what I was thinking, you know. Uh and honestly, I wasn't even thinking of losing that round. It was just it was just uh what did I have to do to to continue? And then on unofficial scorecards, they did have you winning that round despite uh the knockdown. When you were taking the knee. Um, from, from all the punishment you had, uh, what was going through your head at that moment? Did, were you thinking, okay, I'm just going to pop right back up. Were you trying to, uh, reassess the game plan? What, what was going through your head as, as you were taking the knee? Yeah. Just take that little breather and go back to what I was doing. That's all I had to do. When you finally did get up, uh, and continued, how, how did you feel in there? Did you feel like, uh, you had your feet under you? Did you feel good when you got up? I did feel good when I got up. I just needed that breather. My condition is up to par. I, I trust my condition. Certainly. And, and also uh, what was up to par was your chin. Uh, you, you were taking some punishment, but, but you definitely stood up to it. Um, in, the, in the ninth round, there was more, uh, more punishment from your end now to him, to Lubin. Um, and it seemed like the momentum swung back in your favor. Uh, you were doing what you wanted in there. Um, how did it feel uh, towards the end of the ninth round for you? Um, the only thing I was looking at really was, uh, Lubin's face actually towards the, toward, I felt like that I started noticing his face more in the ninth round and his face completely started to morph. And I was just wondering when the ref or the corner was going to stop the fight. Cause that was too much. And the corner ultimately did stop the fight. 
Um, what did it feel in that moment? We saw how excited you were in round two to get the knockdown. I'm, I'm sure you were even more excited to, to get the win and the stoppage. How did it feel for you? Oh, very good. Very good. My, my whole team was excited. Uh, we got the job done. We went over there. We went over there as the, the underdog and uh, we got the job done. Now, I didn't feel like I was going in as underdog, underdog but everybody else was calling that way. So uh, it was exciting to prove everybody wrong. And, and you certainly showed that you were not the underdog. Uh, when we looked at the scorecards post-fight, one of the scorecards was a draw, 85-85. The other two scorecards had Lubin up by one round, 85-84. to 84. Um, When you heard those scorecards and, and saw that you were actually losing on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage, what was going through your head when you first heard that? Yeah, when I heard that, I was like, eh, what can I say? But, you know, my dad told me, you got to think about it this way. Um, what corner would you really want to be on looking at the fight? And I definitely would have wanted to be on my, my side, obviously. And uh, that's all I thought, you know, and, and that, and we don't leave it to the judges, just don't leave it to the judges. And we didn't, we just got the job done. It's always great when you can take it into your own hands, uh, and take it out of, out of the judges hands. Um, I, I know that, that after, uh, you said that this was your best performance of your career. So, so how proud of yourself are you for achieving what you did there on Saturday night? Oh, very proud, very proud. It makes me more proud or more, more happy because it, it's just proving everybody wrong. Again, you know, uh, a lot of people doubted us this fight. A lot of people doubted us the last couple of fights, but we keep doing it over and over again. And, and we're going to keep doing it until we retire. I feel like uh, I don't think anybody's, not everybody's going to uh, jump on the Sebastian boat right away, but, uh, you know, we just keep proving them wrong every single time. And you mentioned that you feel like people were doubting you coming into this. You had the underdog mentality. You're, you're undefeated. You're young. You obviously have a huge reach. Um, your South Paw, there's, there's a lot of great things there. You've got power, a great chin. So why is it that you feel people doubt you? I think it's just uh, just the way I am. They probably see me. They probably think uh, the glasses or the the Crocs and all that, the lime shirt or whatever. It throws them off, you know. It, uh, 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 but you know, don't judge a book by its cover. And and when you mention the things that make you you, uh, the green shirt, the the glasses, everything. Um, what what is the reason for that? Is that just you being yourself? That's your personality, and and you're just showcasing that. Yeah, I'm just me being me. This. With, uh, uh, I remember when I first started fighting on TV, people would think the nice guy act was a, uh, what's an act, but that's just the way I am. It's, uh, I'm not hiding anything. I'm not doing anything for, for the TV. It's just, just the way I am. And, uh, it's, it's juxtaposed with what you do in the ring, knocking people out, um, in, in amazing fights like this one, knowing what, you know, now after going those nine rounds with Lubin, if you could go back in a time machine and tell yourself anything, would there be any advice that you would have given yourself before the fight? You know, after learning everything that you did. Mm, I think that fight was exciting. They say, they keep saying it, it could be a candidate for the fight of the year. So I don't think I would change anything. If I do get that award or anything that, that comes with that, heck, I'll leave it the way it is. It's always exciting uh, when fighters trade knockdowns and, and there's drama in that way. And that, that's what happened. You certainly delivered not just with a great performance, but also a, a very dramatic uh, win getting up from the canvas. You said in the post-fight interview that you're happy with the interim belt, but you want to go after the real belt. And we know, of course, uh, that will be decided uh, later on between Charlo and uh, Castaño. I, I know that you've said that you believe Charlo will win that fight. So let me ask you this. Um, who do you, Not who do you think will win, but who would you rather have as an opponent? Who do you match up better against, Charlo or Castaño? Uh, I was asked that question before, too. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, honestly. Whoever has the belts, that's why I want to fight. I feel like my style can handle both of them. And, and it's just whoever I fight, I'll be happy with. We know the one very unique attribute that, that you bring into the ring uh, is the length, is the size. Um, how do you feel uh, Charlo or Castaño would, would handle that, and, and how would that work to, to your favor? Um, you know, I, I don't know how they would handle it. I, they never fought a six-foot-six six softball, so we don't know yet. But uh, I just I can say that, that we, we want to win, and we're going to go and do it if they give us the opportunity. 
when on, on social media, Terrence Crawford was watching your fight. He tweeted Fundora, a cheat code. He's the type of character that you make on fight night. Um, so what, what is your reaction to, uh, to Terrence Crawford there? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I didn't see anything as like a shot at me or anything like that. Just, uh, just, just, yeah. Opinion and all that. And I, I actually saw it and I laughed. So I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, that could certainly be uh, said as a compliment, saying you know your cheat code because of the unique attributes that that you bring in into the ring. Um, your style, you you fought this fight almost in a in a phone boot style. You got inside and, and you were landing the uppercuts, which was definitely very effective. Um, you, because of your your height, your head is almost out of the way, uh, so it's it's definitely a really good strategy. Typically in boxing, traditionally we would see a, a long, tall fighter, and you would think, oh work the jab from distance. Why is it that, that you've chosen to not do that as much and, and instead work on the inside? It's just something I feel comfortable with. I like fighting on the inside. Honestly, I feel safer in the inside. I feel like my punches land very hard and uh, I'm in a more comfortable position and, and that's just the way I like to fight. And would you consider ever trying the, the other style of working on the jab and moving around the ring and kind of keeping yourself at distance from your opponents? Or are you, are you going to stick to, to what's been working for you? Uh, I do. I do what my dad tells me, you know, uh, if I, but, but, you know, if I see a guy, I can walk down and just break, break through. I'm just going to do that and make my job a little easier. Looking ahead. Uh, we know that, that you're having a lot of success here at 154 pounds. Um, when you think about the future, I'm sure that you want to go for the belt for 154, but as your career plays out, you're only 24 years old. So you have a long career ahead. Would you think about moving up in weight? You know, uh, um, I don't know. It's what God has for me right now. I still walk this way. If I wanted to, I could go down, but, uh, that's it's just, I feel comfortable at 154. I want to become a champion at 154. Whenever my body tells me move up to 160 or 168 or 175, wherever I'm going, I'll move it. Looking ahead here. Uh, we, we mentioned Charlo and uh, Castaño. If you could pick a dream opponent, regardless of weight class, regardless of era, who do you think is someone that you would love to fight? Um, who's, uh, I don't know. I guess maybe with the, maybe with the 154, right? <laughs> it's one of the best. That'll be a good fight right there. Well, and, and you said you could move down to 47 if needed, right? So you could make that yes. happen. That too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You're only 24 years old and, and you just headlined on Showtime. You were the main event. You're now in line for a title shot. Um, you have your own version of the title, the interim title. Um, did you believe that this could happen for you so soon? I feel like this was just part of the plan. My dad told me at 24, I'll be fighting for a world title or, or along the lines right there. And we are. Everything's on track. Uh, um, um, at 21, we knew we'd be fighting contenders already. And uh, uh, it's just everything's part of the plan. I'm just following through. Certainly you're doing that and uh, you're providing high drama and knockouts along the way. Uh, definitely a fan friendly fighter. Um, what would be your final message to your fans and your supporters? Uh, hope you guys stay with me this whole journey. Uh, the ones who started with me continue to, to continue to be with me because uh, world titles coming soon. Sebastian Fundora, I want to congratulate you again on the, on the big victory. Looking forward to, to seeing you back in there soon and, and all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.